Thanks. Come forward, please. Otherwise, you might not hear. My name is Atula Bogada. I am uh, used to be the lead organizer of Melbourne Silicon Beach until December last year. I have now handed it over to other people. Just, uh, I would like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of this land that we stand, the voluntary people of the Kulam Nation, and uh, also thank all of you for coming tonight and uh, to this Melbourne Knowledge Week, uh, our main presentation by Melbourne Silicon Beach. We normally meet at a pub, Royal Melbourne Hotel, but this is this is uh, really a move up for us. It's a really good start now for us to get serious and move out of the pub. So I'd really like to thank the City of Melbourne for inviting us here. They actually insisted that we have our event here and not at the pub. So we were quite nervous. So there may be a few technical glitches because we are not used to this uh, atmosphere. Please bear with us. And uh, I'd like to thank all the volunteers who have worked hard because this kind of event won't happen without the volunteers. They're scattered around the way. Alexa will be the main uh, lead event host for tonight. And uh, there is John somewhere. They're all hiding. Others, John. And uh, Rogan. And uh, so many others who did so many things and we've we got volunteers coming in doing professional photography, Cody, you can see him with the camera and BuzzConf is uh, doing the video for us. Uh, their website came up here, buzzconf.io, just check them out. It's a great conference that's happening in the Victorian country town. It's a bit of Burning Man uh, and Tech combined. There's a ring and uh, Sorry, then who runs past conference. I want to introduce uh, you to Silicon Beach without taking a more time because they are, are you guys ready? Or do I keep talking? Yeah. Uh, Silicon Beach, Australia. Silicon Beach, Oz is our hashtag. So use that as well as Silicon Beach Mail is our Twitter handle. But we are on the brink of creating a non-profit company for Silicon Beach, Australia. Uh, we have scheduled that to happen after 1st July, the new financial year, and take these Silicon Beaches around the country. We have one in Sydney, Adelaide. Uh, Adelaide one actually is closed down, so we need to open it again. Uh, Brisbane, Gold Coast, uh, Perth, and also be open in Geelong, Ballarat, in Launceston. We've got uh, Adam from Long System who will be our keynote speaker. So we are now getting uh, ready to set up a non-profit company and open Silicon Beaches right around the country and connect these communities together. It's going to be the world's alternative to Silicon Valley. I think we can do it in Australia with your help. So there will be a lot of initiatives that are coming like Silicon News. We started on Medium that allowing your pictures to go on to the web through Medium as blog posts. We call them pitch blogs and then we'll be sending it out to investors around the world so you can get your startups uh, launched. We are basically disrupting the investment climate that we have in Australia, which is not really supportive of bootstrapping startups. So uh, very early stage startups can get invested. Okay, I think I've spoken enough. Now I'll hand to our lead event host for the night, Alexa. Uh, using 
PowerPoints and stuff like that, which I hope will be on. Will be. Yeah, the, the slides will be on and be going through a PowerPoint. We need a volunteers to run our events and also to expand across Australia. So we have some uh, global operational stuff happening. It is planning and it, uh, we are collaborating on Slack. So please, uh, if you're interested in like technology and uh, social enterprise and stuff like that, and have some spare time during the week to help us. Uh, any time and any skill would help us. Please come and find Rogan. Where is Rogan? Rogan. At the back. How can people find you? Could you come here, thanks. So, here's the contact point for volunteers. Come and find him. He joined Silicon Beach, I think, uh, four or five months ago. And look, a lot, uh, many of volunteers that are helping tonight, they joined recently and they, together, uh, we are bringing uh, of this event for you. So, the, the okay, so it's the slides up. Good. So, here's Rogan, cool. So, uh, I tell you about the format of tonight. You can come on the stage. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, so, we're gonna spend like uh, half an hour on announcements, and then we're gonna go to the fun bit, which Silicon is very famous for, which is the pitch nights, right? And we've got uh, an amazing list uh, lined up already. So, uh, in terms of announcements, uh, the first lucky slide is the major line that is there for uh, like 10 minutes right now. First of all, I have to explain what's going on. So Melbourne Silicon Beach is one of Silicon Beaches across Australia. So up until last year, they were all different Silicon Beaches, just a few of them, Sydney, Brisbane, and Melbourne. And Melbourne started becoming very active, and Afula uh, was the one who, after he took over, he started expanding the idea of Silicon Beach. So after Silicon Beach Melbourne, we had Silicon Beach Geelong, then uh, we had Silicon Beach launch system, with Adam, we talk all about it. And we, we, we also had Silicon Beach Ballarat that... Oh, hold on. I thought maybe when I changed the slides, you also see it, sorry. Could you go to the next slide? Yes, so Silicon Beach Ballarat and Silicon Beach Geelong. So we expanded across Victoria, and the next step is to uh, set up a foundation where all Silicon Beaches from across Australia connect together this way, when someone needs a skill somewhere else in Australia, we find a good in other uh, parts of Australia, and together we could create a good uh, uh, community for flourishing startups. So, about the Emerging Line, could you open the webpage for Emerging Line? So the Magic Long is a, an innovative uh, event. The other, the other one, the previous slide. Okay, hold on, hold on, let me talk about that. Okay, because it, it will take that. So Silicon Beach Ballarat is the one that has started. It started last year, Ballarat. Who here doesn't know where Ballarat is? Everyone knows? Where is Ballarat? How far is it? Yeah, people think it's too far, it's just one hour and you, you need your marquee. So you use your marquee, jump on a train, you go for one hour and you uh, go to Ballarat. So we, we're planning with them to have a big uh, uh, event in Ballarat in around June or July. We announce it, but have an eye on that. If you join Silicon Beach Meetup, uh, you get the notification and the all the uh, stuff happening over there. So now we will go to MH Long. I forgot your name as well. What was it? Kyle, oh, yes, I remember it. So, okay, here it is. Uh, Emerging Line, I have to uh, give the pitch for them. I'm not the best person, but I'll try. So, uh, the guy behind this is an entrepreneur based in July. He's a thinker, he's a great guy. So, I know him in person. So, he's put together a, a new format of the event, of event to help the local business in July. It doesn't need to be startup, it could be a small business, it could be uh, entrepreneurs. So there the music there, there are some sort of arts, so people get to uh, draw some paintings and stuff like that. So it's a fun day, and I think it's only $90. And, and they, it is $90 because they're running it. Could you scroll down as well, Kyle? Could you scroll down? So the cost of it is because they're running it in a very fancy uh, uh, 
same pair which is the G, B, B, uh, the pair of which G line. So that will be when I will be there. Yeah, next one, thanks. Feel free to interrupt me, that's fine. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Okay, oh, I can have mine too. Okay, cool. So, uh, I'll probably uh, move on this because we couldn't get anyone from uh, Queensland to give a, give, uh, give a picture. But uh, Brisbane also, Brisbane and Gold Coast have also big uh, Silicon Beach communities. We're trying to connect with them and together with Silicon Beach Australia. Next slide, please. Okay, that's, that's the point that we're going to introduce Adam. Please come on the stage. Uh, I'm going to introduce Adam professionally uh, in a few minutes when he's going to run our keynote. But now he's going to tell us about Silicon Beach Lancet in the meantime. So, yes, I'm from Launceston. I'm your overseas speaker. But I, uh, Launceston, we've got over 90 members in our Silicon Beach group. It's growing. We're having rapidly um, having some fantastic events. We actually got the uh, US Vice Consul down to come and present about how we build better relations with the US. The CEO of Enterprise, which is our state government funded ICT accelerator. Uh, I run programs in primary schools, so we took our entrepreneurs out to a primary school. Uh, and we actually ran in April, and check out the Cowork on System page if you haven't seen it, an hour tutorial on how to make your own business look professional. I got a graphic designer in and gave you the tips of the trade to get your business looking professional. It's what we're regularly doing. We have a monthly meetup, uh, the third Thursday of the month, but for everybody here, you're probably not going to fly down as easily. Uh, so check out the Cowork on System page as we live stream from there. But there's lots of exciting things that are happening in Launceston, as you can see on the screen and on the right hand side is our brand new co-working space, 700 square metres and it's only 30 bucks a day to work out of there. So worth flying down and coming checking out the awesome things that are happening in Tassie. Thank you. So before we move on to the next slides, uh, I went to uh, Tasmania for the first time last year. I went to Hogwarts for GraphHack. And then uh, we, with Apple, we went to Launch System to uh, kick, us, kick, sorry, kick off Silicon Beach Launch System, which was an amazing uh, trip to Launch System. And since then, a lot of things happening, and I can't even uh, keep up with things that are happening over there. Do you have a newsletter or something? Yeah. You just put all the events? Yeah, Facebook page. You have a Facebook page. I'm not on Facebook, for example. You'll be seeing on, on me, for example. OK. Carl, let's, let's, let's move on. That's a different debate. Yeah. Let's move on to the next slide. So, one of the things we need volunteers is to help us with presentations, so we could do much better with slides. Okay, so we don't have any sponsor at the moment. This is something we're looking for because we absolutely have no source of funds. So it's volunteers coming together, trying to make something big happen and help Australian startup ecosystem and make some change for the better of the world. Uh, but if there is uh, any company that finds their value aligned with us, and happy to sponsor us. We'd love to hear about them, from them. But uh, there are already organizations that are supporting us. And we, we call them partners and supporters. So I wish I could put a slide and uh, put a slide pair partner, but I uh, quickly mentioned them on top of my head. So we've got Melbourne Bitcoin Center, which uh, hosted us and is still hosting us. We've got uh, some meetings there. Uh, who here doesn't know about Mel uh, Bitcoin Center? Okay, a couple of people, all right. So, uh, I think we have some people from uh, Bitcoin Center tonight with us. Do we? I saw something. Yes? Scott, what your name was? Simon. Simon. Anybody, anyone else? All right. So, if you had any question about Bitcoin blockchain and Bitcoin Center, and how you could be a member of and what kind of uh, services they offer, find Simon over there. Could you bring up your hand again? Yeah, with a cool headset. And we, uh, we also had Queen's Collective uh, two years ago that was, that, uh, was hosting us. We have to uh, uh, say thank you to them. And General Assembly is helping us. And uh, Honorable Society, the co-working space, is also helping us. Uh, and some others that I may have forgotten. Okay, next slide, please. So we, we thought we put together some uh, non silicon Beach stuff that you might want to know, they're relevant. So Golf Hack 2017 is coming. Golf Hack is a hackathon. And if you don't know what a hackathon is, it's a very cool thing. Definitely find out, ask people who know about hackathons. There are a lot of hackathons are happening around. I'm not going to take your time, but explain what hackathon is. But Golf Hack in particular is a hackathon that is about the data that government has. So the data, sorry, the government, uh, 
as part of doing their job, they're collecting a lot of information and data, but they're not fast enough or innovative enough to use that information. They started publicizing that, uh, those information, and Golf Hack is one of the efforts to bring people, innovators, uh, to come together and within two days to use that data for a purpose. It could be a game, it could be an application, and they have a very good process. And if you check out their website, uh, last year there were a lot of very interesting uh, applications came out of two days free event that was actually working. So check their website and it's free, you could be part of it, find out uh, in your local area. Last year there were two uh, places in Melbourne that ran golf hack and it's across Australia and New Zealand. Next slide, Carl, please. I think they're yeah, for the next slide. Okay, could you click on the link as well? I think the last letter A is missing from the link, so you need to manually. Yeah, you mentioned. Right, so some of them. Boss come. Alright, so you ready? I shut up. I play. Good evening, everyone. How are you all? Um, um, there's a slideshow that goes like this as well, I think, that is hopefully queued up. Um, and I'd like to just talk to you quickly about what bus golf is. You've seen the video here, um, so you should know pretty much everything there is to know about it. People have fun, people learn, people innovate, people collaborate, people meet new people. You go to a traditional technology conference, and you're in a room, you learn from somebody who's imparting knowledge on you. And then you go to the lunch break and you talk to people, and that's exciting. And then you go back into a room, you learn, and then you go to a hotel conference, uh, a hotel afterwards, or a dinner with people that you know already. So you don't really meet people. Buzz Pump is slightly different. Is there a slideshow? There's no slideshow. Oh, there is no slideshow. So I'm just going to talk to you about a slideshow. That's fine. So there's three main components to Buzz Pump. There's the, uh, the talks and the workshops. So we do run like a traditional conference. We have presenters, there's a call for papers, people come along, they, they teach you. There's workshops, you can learn how to build robots, build uh, virtual reality games using the Unity platform. Uh, because it's run over a weekend, uh, there's a huge big family track involved as well. So children come along and they're learning. They might build worlds in Minecraft, or they might make stop motion videos. Uh, because it's set in a campsite, it used to be a campsite, the, the owners now run it more as an event space. There's power throughout, we run really good internet access, so despite the fact that we're in Ballarat, which is less than an hour outside of Melbourne, it's less than an hour after you touch on the IP. So just this side of Ballarat. In a minute. In a minute. It's coming up. Oh, it's coming up. Oh, there you go. There's the first slide. Oh, is Yes. So that's the first point there, we've got the technology stuff. The other part is that, um, so we start on Friday evening, we start the party. So people who come along, we've got stage, we've got music, we've got musicians, um, we've got lights, we've got campfires, we have uh, catering and drinks on site. Um, because it's camping, you bring your own barbecue and do your own cooking as well, if that's something you'd like to do, um, or you can just buy your food while you're on site. But there's a huge party element, and in fact, um, because we're technology focused as well, for uh, one of the acts that we had last year, was actually streamed live from Bucharest. We had one of our sponsors actually brought in a whole lot of equipment that allowed really low latency streaming of one of our uh, one of our apps, which is fantastic. And then the third part, which I've mentioned already, which is actually my second part, uh, is the family aspect. So yes, we have children along uh, and, and, and those kind of things. The conference itself has a really diverse, and, and so I want to talk to you tonight both because I want you all to come along because it really is fun. Um, come talk to me. Rick is over there somewhere. He's hiding from me. Um, or at that table, come back and grab a sticker because everybody likes stickers, and um, we'll tell you more about it. Um, but we are also at the moment in the phase of looking for uh, sponsors and partners. So if you want, uh, if you think you're, you might be interested in getting involved uh, in this, 
uh, enterprise, uh, or if you uh, are a similar kind of organization you want to collaborate in some ways, we collaborate with Silicon Beach, General Assembly, and a number of others as well. Um, so the, the types of people that come along, we've got a really good distribution between small, medium, large enterprises. Um, a lot of people come along, decision makers, if that's the kind of type of target they're looking to, uh, to speak to. Uh, I won't get into your those words, but basically there's a lot of bubbles up there which is outlining how happy previous sponsors are. They've, um, they've all come along pretty much. Um, a couple of sponsors, Elastic actually sponsored the drop of a hat to that and knowing anything about it and just said we've got to be involved. Um, we've had Australian Post involved uh, and all sorts. In terms of uh, social engagement, we were training at number one on the Saturday, number two on the Sunday last year. This was while there was also there were also a whole lot of other hackathons and uh, similar events happening around Australia, which uh, we're really proud of. And we've got a huge uh, reach in terms of our network through um, the bus of nights that we run, which are events that happen every month that lead up to the event uh, to the festival. Um, the festival will be running on the 1st to the 3rd of December this year, and the next bus conference is on the last Thursday of this month. Uh, so, ways you can get in touch with us to find out more. Uh, there's our URL and our email address, Rick and I are standing at the centre over there, um, and there are phone numbers if you want to take a photograph um, or memorise it. That's about it. Thank you for listening, and have a great evening. Ben, also, I'm not sure if I've mentioned or not, uh, Boscom is also helping us with filming this event, which is uh, great. It's really expensive to get someone to film it professionally. Uh, Alright, let's move to the, well, let's move to the next uh, slide, and while he's doing it, uh, please, when you're taking photos, if you're on Twitter, use hashtag SiliconBeachOz, O-Z, uh, for tweeting. We want to uh, make a trend. Okay, could you play the video for me, please? With, with the audio? Also was the boss comp nights, yeah, a lot of good memories. So after two years they're back now and they want to do a lot of very exciting stuff. So check them out. And they are a very good uh, supporter of Melbourne Silicon Beach. So hopefully we see more collaboration together. Oh we've got them here. Awesome. Thank you for coming. Cool. Right. Thanks for coming. So if you should, should I yeah, if you've got questions. That's the crew there, and on the crew. All right, so let's move on to the next slide. Okay, that's that's the. Okay, I have to be. I have to be ready for that. So that's Adam. Again, this is a more professional uh, introduction. Uh, so Adam is really doing a lot of things. I, I just I have to read out uh, his uh, introduction. So in any given week, Adam uh, must go. Uh, might be helping young entrepreneurs to kickstart their companies. Uh, stimulating small businesses to challenge their status quo, status quo, challenging communities to understand their potential, or reaching hundreds of students to embrace innovation to solve the problems of the future. Could you go to the next slide, Ronald? Yeah. 
So Adam is the founder of Illuminate, 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 is it? Illuminate Education that has taught over 3,500 Australian students how to start their own business, which is like amazing. Students means high school students, right? Not university, high school. And more primary, wow. Executive director of the uh, Van Diemen project, which was recently announced as Tasmanian most innovative startup, delivering business advice and support. The 2015 Tasmanian Young Australian of the Year, and the finalist for Young Australian of the Year. Are you going to make it? Australian of the Year? Uh, no, next year. Cool. So, Director for Entrepreneurship, Startups and Innovation for Northern Tasmania Development Corporation, which is a government body, as, uh, as far as I understand. Director for Director of Cohort Loan System. And so, if a Silicon Beach shows up in Loan System, you give them a free day of co-working, right? Yeah. So, if you go to Loan System, also if you're watching the video, go to if you want a free office for the day, go to Cohort Loan System. And importantly, the co com Convenier of Silicon Beach Lung System. Please welcome Adam to the stage. That was all the interesting stories. Good evening, and thank you for that. Uh, it's great to be here this evening. As, as I mentioned jokingly before being an overseas speaker, I did fly to Bass Strait. Uh, before I sort of do talk about what I want to share, I do also add my acknowledgement to traditional owners and the land we meet on. But I also want to say it's fantastic to see so many people here. So give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> so you've heard it like our Silicon Beach group has 90 members total, so our turnouts are this little group. So it's fantastic to see so many people here. But look, you quickly work out that I'm really passionate about this, so I may get carried away. But I'm really excited to share some of my reflections on teaching young people how to start their business to basically ask the question, when should we start doing it? See, all young people should be empowered with the skills to be entrepreneurs, but let me explain that a little bit further. I don't just mean they're going to run tech startups and make millions of dollars. I have a different definition of an entrepreneur. To me, an entrepreneur is someone who is self-confident, self-motivated and resilient. They're confident to step out and to make something happen, and they're motivated to do it under their own steam, not requiring someone else to have to lead them into that. And then they're resilient, because all of us know that when you get knocked down, you have to get back up again. Now, when I'm talking about them being entrepreneurs, it's not just about starting businesses, it's about becoming valuable leaders within organisations, because we need co-founders, we need staff that can help us drive our businesses forward what we call our entrepreneurs, or even just being more aware of our business. But also, we are more than our own jobs. We have to consider how we prepare the entire person for the future. Not just someone who works and earns money, but actually how to live wisely, make contribution, contributions back to our community, volunteer at Silicon Beaches, and so much more. And that's where I look at from my perspective when I design my education programs. It's about young people achieving their full potential. See, for some people, the why question in education is to prepare students for the world of tomorrow. The challenge is, though, the world's changing faster than any of us can prepare for. I'm 29, and I have students at NextGen who are picking me up on technology solutions, which is really useful, but makes me feel old. But this is unprecedented. No longer can we prepare students for career paths because there's a good chance those jobs won't exist in the future. We've got data out there that says 6 out of 10 Australians who are studying in vet courses will complete training and have their job automated. One in three young people are either unemployed or underemployed, which means they could earn far more hour, work far more hours, but they just aren't there for them. I've seen data that says 20 people apply for every Australian job on average. Gone are the days of having one job for life or even staying in the same industry, because the data says you'll have 15 jobs over four different industries. So it's no longer about making yourself valuable for one job, but how can you be employable to different industries? The types of jobs are changing as one in ten workers can be done, one in ten jobs can be done remotely. And being in Launceston with fiber to the premise NBN, we have that opportunity. And for those who are thinking that studying is what's going to get you a job, it takes on average 4.7 years from full-time education to full-time work these days. It's not easy. And now that's where we need entrepreneurs to challenge that, to make that opportunity their own. We need to support young people for the unimaginable possibilities of the future, with skills they adapted to multiple careers. 11 odd years ago, I was finishing year 12, I opened up my Facebook profile, 
Now I'm delivering social media training for community organisations, writing government policy on social media, and so much more. That's the world we're in today, because that job didn't exist when I was leaving school. We need to encourage everyone to find and implement solutions to problems and develop the skills to do so. But not just the skills for one job, but how can those skills be used across multiple careers? And with this in mind, we have to start looking at a skill-based learning opportunity. And I'm talking skills such as problem solving, where students don't just sit back when something goes wrong, but they get in and they work through it. Communication and presentation skills, so they can win at any opportunity when they have to talk to people. Financial literacy, so they understand the flows of money. Critical thinking, so they don't just blindly follow the crowd. Creativity, so they can track how they can transfer skills and jump into new opportunities. Teamwork, because we all have to work with other people. Digital literacy, so they can use basic software packages efficiently. And reflection, to know how to do better next time. And when you take a skills-based approach, you open up a wider horizon for what can be seen as potential jobs. Because our young people, when they enter this rapidly changing workforce, we want them to be prepared. Not just for a single job when they finish training, but a suite of skills that get them to anywhere they want to be, even if that's starting their own business. Think of the way that we pack our bags or our, um, we'll get into cars before the start of a day. We care to prepare for everything we need, and if you're like me, you've probably got one or two spare things in the car just in case. How are our young people leaving the school gates with all the extra skills they need to go out into the world? Imagine what our community would be like if we don't just limit the opportunity, the possible careers and paths for our young people, but we equip them with the skills to be entrepreneurs and tell them to go out and use them. And even better, actually celebrated them for applying their skills, irrespective of their abilities and circumstances, no matter what environment they applied in. So with that, obviously talking about young people and when should we start teaching business. For some young people, yes, they begin their working journey when they're old enough, but that's not when we should start preparing them for it. So the slide here is some of my teaching that I've done this year around Australia, teaching young people how to start their own business. At high school level, we teach students how to start their own business in five days in an immersive program. And in that five days, they'll develop a full business plan, two-year financial forecast, marketing collateral, a pitch deck presentation ready for investment and so much more, as well as create the idea in those five days. They learn not only the skills to be an employee, but what it takes to run a business so they can be better no matter what they do and also learn the skills to start their own. But then also primary schools, where we're teaching at years four to six level how to start a business. Because you would be surprised and amazed at the creativity of our young people, which sadly gets taught out, but that's a whole different conversation. But we need to actually support young people at an early age and give them the spark that they can start their own business. They just need to learn the language of business, the format of business, but they have the ideas that would wow all of us right here tonight. We teach primary school students to do a break-even analysis on their idea. And when you've got a year four student that comes up to you and goes, I need too many customers, what am I going to do? I did a business advice to adults and I asked them what a break-even analysis and they scratched their heads. So watching young people, they need these skills and we need them now. Students can solve the problems of the future. Firstly, we need to actually ask them and then empower them with the solutions. In the last six months, we've talked to students around tourism ideas on King Island, North East Tasmania and in East Gippsland. Last week, I was out in Sale. One of the ideas the students came up with is like the capsule hotels in Japan, but in little shacks of about 10 units that just sit on the side of the road so you can pull over and have a snooze when you're sort of driving through. That's the creativity of our students. Wilderness camps on islands and eco compartments in shipping containers for remote locations. We taught primary school students about sustainable business ideas, where a group of primary school students at East Launceston came up with the idea of recycling plastic bottles, melting them down into bins, but then putting a basketball hoop on top so it became fun to throw your plastic bottles in the recycling bin. And also ways to prevent health issues in our community, including a group of students in WA who came up with the idea of an employment agency that worked with people coming out of rehab to give them the job that they needed so they could become a member of a valuable member of society after going through rehab. Students are solving these problems now. We need to keep showing them the process to pitch an idea to ensure it's viable, to ensure it's viable, and build a strategy. The rest of them, the rest of it, is up to them because they are capable. Now, as if you'd love to talk further about it, there are all my details on the screen. I'd love to do this. We're going to teach around 5,000 Australian students this year as we move education as we partner with Chartered Accountants and Australia Post to inspire more young people to start their own business. And we're always looking for more people to collaborate with, help with, 
if you know a region where your young people could be inspired to make a difference, we're there. This is an off week for me, hence why I'm here, not in Launceston. But next week I'm in Central Coast, the week after I'm out of Hallam, working with all of their high school students to become the entrepreneurs of the future. This is Australia's future and we need to start it now. Thank you. So we came to the fun bit, which is the pitch night. So can I ask everyone who is registered to give a pitch, please stand there? Is everyone is there already? Yep. Good. Adex. Who's Adex? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, wait, Adex. I'm going to watch you on stage. Okay, so, so about pitches, uh, you're going to see what the format is. We have one, I think one or, or maybe two, depends on the time, uh, free slots for pitches. So if you feel like after this you get excited and you want to pitch about your idea or your business, come and see, come and, sorry, come and see John. Where is John? John Webster? Oh yeah, there, yeah. Okay, could you, could you also go next to the uh, pitches? Thanks. So if, if you feel like you want to give a pitch, uh, do it there, please. So go go and see John, and we arrange that. We we have uh, we have one spot there. Okay. And after the pitches, uh, maybe I should say actually. Let's let's go for it. All right. Please welcome. Your name? Robbie. His microphone. Hi. Hello. Hello. All right. Hold on. So we we need someone to take, uh, keep track of time. We need a volunteer with a with a phone to come here right now. Yeah. 90 seconds. 90 seconds. Yeah. And if it's great, you could come closer so he could see the timer. Is that okay? Yeah, it's going to be on my watch. So I'll just on your watch? Give you a wave at 60 seconds. You know, 60 seconds. Okay, so have an eye on him. He'll tell you. And also because we're not, we're running out, well, we don't have much time. So I'll cut it at the 90 seconds. Yeah, that's so it's good if you could just go yourself I'll without force. Sure. Yeah, that's good. All right, go for it. Oh yeah, could you, could you open the website, Kyle, please? Yeah, it's there. It's you there. can see it. Oh, right. Hi guys, uh, I'm Ravi. Uh, we have launched a platform called Adex, uh, which is Ad Exchange Technology. It's an artificial intelligence for doing digital marketing. Basically, you tell your this AI about your business by answering a simple questionnaire in natural language. It will basically pick up all the stuff from your questionnaire answers and design your ads for Google, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and implement those ads, manage your budgets. It runs like a subscription service. All the ad spend is included in the pricing of the platform. So if you want to know more about it, I will be around. Just have a chat with me. Thank you. Next slide, please. Teaching me, Rachel from Teaching Me, open, open the link as well. Uh, this is the presentation, if you could open up the PowerPoint. Rachel, please come on stage, Rachel. Ah, oh, sorry, sorry, it's Bruno. 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 Sorry, I just remembered. Uh, you'll have your 90 seconds, the moment that PowerPoint is on, okay? It will be on, it's working. You can see it on this screen. You can see it. Working. Go for it. Okay, hi there. Uh, my name is Bruno and I'm the CTO and um, co-founder of Teaching Me. So just out of interest, who here in the room um, has been ever trying to look for a tutor or class? Either for themselves or for the kids. And here's how um, Teaching Me comes in. This process is really difficult for some people and it can take them even weeks, if not even months, to, uh, to find the right teacher. So Teaching Me helps teacher, uh, have students and parents to find the right class in the neighborhood online with just a few mouse clicks. At the same time, we are providing, um, just trying to find the right slide here, uh, something not quite right. So I was hoping to find the slide right. At the same time, we provide for teachers 
a platform to promote and manage their class online. And let's have a look at the, uh, the market here in Australia. So just for tutoring alone, we think um, the market is already an estimated $1 billion, and that's quite a lot. So we've got, so far since our launch in September 2016, uh, two, over 2,500 subscribers, we continue to build our significant network with universities and schools. And we've got an ambitious vision. Um, we want to be the first choice of teaching and learning um, platform in Australia. We've got a dedicated uh, team with a quite varied expertise, not only in the business domain of education, but also in technology. We've got an investor on board, and for anybody who wants to share a skill over here in the, road, uh, or in the room, please check us out on uh, teachingme.com and create a listing. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, pass the mic. And you were so lucky that we haven't yet, John and I, we were at uh, like a sign language or something. <laughs> so I didn't know if it's finished or not. So when it's finished, all right, so next, next slide, please. Okay, so tips for, so for those of you who are wanting to come on a stage, whether you are in this line or you're amongst the audience, when you come, it's very important at the end you say what you want, because there might be people that are interested in what you're doing, but if you don't say what you want, there's no point. The second is that you could look at the monitor, Right, so you'll see what's on the screen. Could you open up the link? Go for it. Hello. Hi everyone, Jordan Tabano here, human behavior expert and sales trainer. Now, I'm pitching my business tonight to talk about why sales is more important than ever to entrepreneurship. So just by a raise of hands in the room, who would like to raise capital or increase sales for their business right now? And let's be real honest, yeah, we love sales, awesome. Who was actually taught how to do that in school? Yep. Love it, awesome, awesome. Right, and this is the problem. Not many people have actually been taught how to sell. I've spoken to about 2,000 solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, business owners, Australia-wide, and they're all limiting their potential. We've not only lacked sales education, but no one's actually taught us what our price is what our self-worth is. And that's why Jordan Tabano Training Solutions is necessary in today's market. So if you want to come and talk to me about self-worth and sales at the end of tonight, go and do your business a favour and I'll be up the back of the room. Thanks. All right, next one. Was it, was it the one that just, okay. Next one, capacity. What's the format? Is the PowerPoint? Yeah. Okay, is this the PowerPoint okay? Right. Good, go for it. You got it? Cool. Hi, I'm Steve, and uh, I'm here to talk to you about human resources, everybody's favourite subject. Okay, hands up who loves their human resources department. Yeah, me neither. I'm here to kill it off. If I could have the next slide, please. Alright. On the right is what human resources systems and talent management systems are designed to give you and on the left is all the stuff that everyone agrees they want and the two don't match. We have a billion, billion, billion dollar industry that fails to deliver and it fails to deliver because every one of these systems is top down right? and particularly when they're doing talent management. Right? Who has done talent management? Set a goal, six months later we'll rate you out of five and then we'll decide whether to sack you. Huh. Really? <laughs> Different crowd, lots of entrepreneurs, not many people who've worked in big business. Let me tell you, it's a huge time waste. Every minute spent on this stuff is down the drain. Right? And worse than that, it puts frontline managers, our primary audience, right in the middle of that sandwich. And because of that, 50% of all frontline managers fail in their first leadership gig. Half, because they set people up to fail. And can I have the next slide please? The system is broken. 
And what we're doing at Capability Builder is we're turning it on its head. Instead of going, hey, you, where's the widgets? Give me a number. Lash, lash, lash. You want to say to people, time. You have, say? Time. time. All right. Come see me afterwards because I want to give you a free offer. Thank you. Great. We developed a very technical uh, method. Ben is there, so anyone will give a pitch. Please look at Ben, and then make sure that this screen doesn't go off. It, it goes off at the end. Right, when it gets very stressful, it just goes off. Yeah. All right. So next, yeah, come on, come on board. Have a look on that. Right, next time I'll be really serious. Uh, good evening. Uh, I'm here to introduce a new mobile app that I've made. Uh, Street gangs, robbery, or even terrorism, we have many problems these days. And I thought about the making a solution together. So what if we share information about local safety issues together? Think about people around you. They will see and hear many things that you miss. And if we can share about those issues, we can stay a lot about those safety issues. But there's one thing really critical when it comes down to safety. That's your privacy. You don't want to go out there and talk about your suspicions. And many people ignore what they see because we don't want to get involved in those situations. So what if we stay connected together but remain anonymous? You don't know them personally and they don't know you. But we can share all these safety issues together. So in this app, can you scroll down? So in this app, all users become P's. That's why it's called people, P-E-A-P-L-E. -E. So you don't need to expose yourself out there and you can talk everything free, safety issues or local issues. And by doing good things for other people, you can earn more green P's and you can level up. So there's a bit of like a gamification. So we encourage people to do the right thing for others. And the message I deliver is we care. So. It's free on iPhone, so you can just yeah, download free and join us. The next one is, you can imagine what happens if you go over time, right? So I'm just getting closer. Yeah, you can try it. Alright, so they have, but the video is on your website, isn't it? Uh, no, don't be sure that's fine. Yes, I'm, I'm yeah, friendly yeah, now. Yeah, oh, <laughs> it's just later. So play it on the website. Uh, so do you yeah. want to play the video? Uh, I'll get my thing. I'll just give you a second. Uh, but you, you have 90 seconds. Uh, that's okay. So do you, do, should we start? Uh, yeah, I'll try. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, hello everyone. My name is Nicholas Isaacs and I'm the co-founder of Fantipper. This is my icebreaker, so it's the first time I've ever done this. And Fantipper is... just started and uh, it's a, a social gratuity um, and uh, it's location based so when you drive into a town you can see which venues have the most tips um, you can forward your tips to social media your tips can work for your venue or um, if you're an app developer and you want to uh, be a little bit independent to everyone else or artist um, you can sign up as a creator with Fantiba so um, yeah so mm, baby tip you one more time <laughs> So before we move on to the next one, uh, uh, I got to know them uh, I think a few days ago or two days ago, and just a, just a feedback for Fantiba. Who the next presenter? Oh yeah, so give me a minute. Uh, we had a conversation on Slack to see if we can use Fantiba for our crowdfunding, but 
it didn't give uh, Aphrodite the impression that it could be used for events. Yeah. It felt like it's just for baristas and things like that. So that's a feedback. Yeah, so for later. Yeah, so you know, because... Yeah, we'll, we'll have a chat later. We'll yeah. have a chat, yeah. Follow us. Yeah, fo follow us. All right. So as, as, please, as we're running this, uh, please consider that if you think of ways that we could improve this, uh, or if you want to do the similar thing in your university, or any idea, please come and tell us. And there are different ways, especially find Rogan. He can tell you how you can. Where is Rogan now? Oh, you'll be back. There was no business here. No one came. This guy. Alexa. Oh, okay, so find Rogan in the back. Alexa. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Alexa. Next, we, sh up? we should put the Slack. Invite things oh, yeah, so yeah, that people yeah. can I'm come. To, yes. Yeah. Thanks for the reminder. Though. All right, please, and Andrew. While Andrew is uh, getting prepared, uh, Andrew, uh, this is his second time. He, he came last time, uh, last month for the first time, and he put his hands up and said, "Hey, I know a bit of sales and things like that. Is there anything you could help?" And he joined our Slack channel, and he was a very active member since then. And now, his second time, he's actually giving a pitch. So we give him two more seconds. All right. <laughs> <laughs> because I can't really fight because you know, like, so it goes over time. All right. Okay. Yeah, you just two bit and then you have to fight. All right, go. The website. Is this good? You want the YouTube playing? Do you want the video now? Yes, please. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Is that fine? Yep. Hi, everyone. My name's Andrew Stonia Gibson. I'm co founder of Universal Reputations. Um, tonight I want to talk very quickly about something that affects all of you today, but it's going to affect you all a lot more in the future, and that's your online reputation in the peer-to-peer -peer or sharing economy. Now, while I can talk all night about the importance of your online reputation individually, what I'd really like to do is get the attention of any peer-to-peer -peer or sharing economy platforms out there. Ooh, because, there we go, because you guys understand that successful platforms require solid feedback systems in order to build the trust that you depend on. But building these systems and then capturing the feedback data requires money, it requires time, and it requires expertise if you want to do it properly. More importantly, it requires the patience of your users. What Universal Reputations is doing is building a reputation network that allows your platform to have instant access to the trust you need at no upfront cost. Or another way of putting it is Universal Reputations is doing for online trust what PayPal is doing for online payments. We basically take care of all of the challenges associated with getting the trust that you need, so you're free to spend your time doing what you're best at to build your business. So if you've got an online platform uh, involved in the peer-to-peer -peer sharing economy, anything to do with one whatsoever, come and have a chat to me. That's it. Thanks very much. No, that's why it's, it's about that, the way we do things. And I'm actually impressed by how many, how much content we deliver in 90 yeah. seconds. Really, yeah, that's good. So the next pitch, Inez. Thank you. Um, how many people out there have ever wanted to learn a new language? Anyone? How many people found it difficult because they couldn't find the time to do that? It's an insanely common issue. Um, and what we're trying to do at Emus is solve that problem. Uh, and we're doing it with one key insight, and that is uh, that it's very well known that the more immersed you are in a language you're trying to learn, the quicker you'll learn it. So the medium we chose to solve this issue was emails. I don't know about you guys, but I spend all day reading emails. And it's boring, it's not fun, I don't get much out of it apart from my work email. Um, so what we do is we gradually translate the emails that you read every day into the language that you're trying to learn. What does gradual translation mean? Uh, as an example, maybe one or two words of a hundred word email would turn into that desired language. So maybe if you're, if you're reading the word hi, hola might pop up. Um, so that's what we do, we make it easier to learn a language by removing the time requirement and immersing you in, in the language learning process for something that you do every single day. Um, it's free to use, so check us out. Um, that's the only reason why I'm pitching right now. Um, but any questions, I'll be around. Thank you very much. Next slide. 
Do you have a website? No? It's just you? That's cool. Thank you. Yeah. Let's see how it goes. Hi everyone, my name is Karthik and I'm working as a uh, consultant at Melbourne Uni and also I'm the founder of uh, Autumn Lifestyle where we convert and transform all the active lifestyle into a more active lifestyle and then we have translated uh, people of age group between 25 to 40 to run half marathons. So in that journey we have converted uh, and identified two key issues. One. All the events that's been organized are high pricing and two, lack of motivation for the runners. As a result of it, we wanted to create a digital online platform wherein we are going to integrate all these runners and two, the lifestyle businesses and three, the event organizing businesses. So at the moment, the industry is around 400 events in Australia with all, all around like 400 participants, 400 finishers. So what it essentially does is it's gonna give and redeem the rewards for those finishers based upon their performance. So that's one of the key things that we are going to produce. And also the main thing is each and every runner across Australia will be given a unique ID based upon which their running performance will be measured up. And this is going to be a data mining and at the moment it's targeting 160 finishers, that is 160 family. I'm looking for co-founders, designers, influencers and mentors, if possible, influencers. Thank you. Oh, three more, Mark, three more joined. All right, so we have three more joined, okay. Uh, I guess we have, we can accommodate them, right? Three more is fine, yeah, yeah all right. Come on. Okay, so uh, the registered one finished and I guess you just put your hand up right now, right? Okay, thank you. That's good. Let's see how you go. Start. Evening Melbourne. Um, so my name is Bill. I just uh, joined the team at um, Suspace here. Um, I uh, think it's worth sharing this idea with you because there's already a lot of people in Sydney loving this. And I just uh, want to make sure nobody in Melbourne misses out. Um, what we do at Suspace is uh, we collaborate, partner up with restaurants or any venue that's closed during the day and is therefore under utilizing your space. Uh, we uh, turn those uh, places into unique and affordable co-working spaces and a network of it. That means that um, we've got places now four o'clock in Sydney, um, just launched our first one here in Melbourne, and uh, many more to come. A member can work from any of these spaces. Uh, we've got a really big community and growing. Um, we're working really hard also to foster that uh, culture inside. And um, yeah, uh, work on collaborating, innovation, etc. Um, so we're really affordable, it's 169 per month, which is uh, half or a third of the price of the current co-working spaces. And um, yeah, we welcome you all to come and try a day for free. We've got our lunch party coming up next uh, week on Thursday, the 11th. Um, so yeah, you're all welcome, and um, let's welcome to Space to Melbourne. Yeah. That's, that's good. Thank, you. Thank you, number two. 30 seconds. Hey guys, I am the Chief Eating Officer of Entertain. Now I'm going to give you guys a relationship hack, okay? Okay, you've got, uh, you forgot your wife's birthday tomorrow, and uh, you say, oh shit, what, what am I going to do? So you're going to go to our website, entertain.com.au with an I, and you're going to browse through our menus, and you're going to go, huh, I'm going to... Uh, I like that chef, the chef of a uh, head chef of Nobu, um, Kengo Hiramatsu, five course menu, uh, $88 book. Because he's gonna come tomorrow to your house and he's gonna shop, prep, cook, serve, and clean for you. And your wife won't even know you forgot her birthday. And you save money um, from that expensive babysitter. Well, who can line up a babysitter overnight anyway? So this is actually, we actually do this for people, and that was a, a, a real case study that we did, and um, that's it. We're a private chef, the Uber of private dining, effortless dining. Uh, I'm gonna hook you guys up. I've got 20 uh, vouchers here. We're gonna shout you dinner. So first 20 people come up to me. Uh, we're looking for investors as well. Um, you know, if you want to be part of a kick-ass startup that's going places, shout me out. My name is Josiah, and thank you very much. Hey, 
can we secure the first uh, 10 for our pitches? People who get pitch? Yeah. Yes, cool, thanks. So, yeah, British is more. Go for it. Hi everyone, my name is Julia and I pitched for the first time ever about a month ago at the Slim for Meach pitch night and I basically just had a concept or an idea at that stage and my idea is for personal trainers to have a platform where they can post classes for the public because when I, I moved to Melbourne about three months ago and I just wanted to try different fitness classes, karate, yoga, and I didn't want to pay corporate gym prices. I just thought, why isn't there a platform where PTs can just post ad hoc classes for the public? So that's what I'm trying to create. And since that pitch night about a month ago, I now have a website and I've become a professional Facebook stalker at finding PTs and signing them up. And I've got a heap signed up now. And it's getting traction and I'm now looking for investors or anyone who's interested in knowing more about it. So yeah, and my website is airgyms.com.au. Uh, so be before before we have the that one, uh, right? Okay. So we had someone from uh, Bitcoin Center. I want to tell a story before you start. Is that okay? Yeah. Of so course. because she said uh, last month she just gave the pitch, now she's got the website. I remember the people that I saw past three years uh, from idea to have a product. So one of them is Antstand, right? Antstand is a business based in Melbourne. It sells internationally, and uh, basically the person behind it, Paul. Uh, has been a volunteer, has helped us a lot. So basically it's an eco-friendly stand for your laptop, it helps your neck and stuff like that. You could check on their website. I don't know if you can give it a discount or something, but it's called Ant Stand, like, because it's very light, but it can carry a lot of heavy things. All right, so thank you, start. And for the first 10 people who visit the Blockchain Center of Melbourne, they'll get that Ant Stand for free. Right. Cause that's where Paul Co works, yeah. <laughs> All right, okay, so, so I've only got 30 seconds, right? I'm Sam Lee, CEO and founder of Blockchain Global, raised $11 million to date, and we, with our partners at uh, Lodge Partners, they're our uh, broker, as well as Shape Capital, they're our corporate advisor, have put together a $5 million accelerator program mandated to invest in blockchain startups. I see a lot of startups here today, but they all can be blockchain startups. They all can integrate this technology that allows permissionless trust into the infrastructure. You don't know what blockchain is? Read my kid's book. My, my seven-year-old and four-year-old have got it after reading this. So I'm sure if they can get it, you can get it too. Thank you. We, we used to have a 30 second pitch after our 90 second pitches and 30 second pitch is basically if you have something that you want to share with the community but I want to reduce that to 10 seconds. I do the first one, the first one and what is that? 10 seconds? No, 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 it's fine. 10 seconds is like one, two, three. So, and if you want to do some of, something like that right now, we, will, uh, we can have like two, three people. So this is my 10 second. I started learning machine learning and AI. And uh, one of the problems I have, I want to know people that are starting from scratch and I want to, I want peer learners to uh, uh, learn with them. So if you're learning machine learning or interested, come find me. That was my 10 seconds. Could you bring up the Slack volunteer thing? So, uh, I want to tell, oh, you've got a pitch. Can I have 10 seconds? Are you at 10 seconds? Yeah. Oh, yes. After this, alright? Okay. So, uh, something uh, that I should mention, this booth that are around here, I am noticing that Olga is still there, right? Yeah, so it's a friend of Silicon Beach. If you've got questions, if you just arrived, you've got questions about virtual reality and their product, come and uh, go and find her. There's also an A uh, augmented reality over there. Not sure if they're still around. That's also cool. And also, if you have a question from a hologram that is there, you could ask our volunteer photographer who happens to be a augmented reality developer too. Yes, that's it. Yes, yeah. You have to jump up there. Yeah, come. Yeah, all right. So this is Cody. Yeah, come here on the stage. Woo! Yeah. So he is a volunteer, and this is his first Silicon Beach, basically. So he became a volunteer before he attended Silicon Beach. Like, amazing. And we don't have anyone to take a photo of him, basically. Come on, 
question about maybe the self with that. Uh, no, no, it doesn't work. Yeah, go on. Oh, thank you. So he knows about holograms and everything. If that thing is a hologram, if you have a question, you could ask him. All right, so that's good. Right. You've got 10 seconds now. Go. Ben. Go Imagine giving a talk to a presentation you've never seen before. Imagine trying to pitch an idea that you've never heard about before. The Art of Bullshit is the meetup that I started. The first one was last month, the next one is May 18th. Check out bullshitart.ist. Thank you, Istanbul. Come see me for a sticker. Thank you. One more 10 seconds. One more 10 seconds. Cool, come on. It's cool, it's working. Yes. <laughs> Wait, can everyone hear me? Yes! Sweet! Uh, yeah. No, the microphone input goes to the video, unfortunately. I know it's there. Okay, so... It's only five seconds, sorry. To follow in the shadow of Sam I'd just like to say that I'm a blockchain and cryptocurrency advocate. On the 12th of the 14th, there is a reg hack on the Ethereum network, so reghack.org. For the developers and anyone who's an entrepreneur, come, join up, it's fine. Could you put a bit of the uh, Slack channel for volunteers? So one of the things that I wanted to do tonight, I wanted to uh, create a list of all the hackathons that are happening around. So you may find something that you are interested in and go, but we couldn't do that because, uh, because of lack of volunteers. So please, if, if you're interested in this stuff, come and talk to us, and there are always things that you can do. Uh, oh, not, not this one, the volunteer channel. All right, so. This is, so what you see is the Slack, if you don't know about the Slack, so get to know about it, it's very cool. So this is where we collaborate on uh, making Silicon Beach happen. There are, different, there are many different channels, we just see a few of them, I think there are 20 different channels. This is the volunteer channel, and it's a public thing, so when you come, we would, we would just uh, talk here. And uh, a lot of interesting stuff that we are going to start to do. So there will be something for anyone who is interested in technology and helping the community. Uh, is there is any, there's a one more 10 seconds, isn't it? You said? Oh, there's no, okay, that's cool. So, I wanna, okay, so this is the last thing. For anyone who gave the pitch, I have a good news for you. So, there is a prize, four days uh, of working in a co working space in the city that is provided by uh, one of our partners, uh, Honorable Society. Could you open the Honorable Society website? So anyone who gave the pitch tonight, especially those lucky ones that just came on stage at the very last minute, uh, they have uh, four days of free co-working at the uh, uh, sorry, uh, Honorable Society. And there's also another prize that we, we, we yet to decide how to choose the best. Uh, yeah, we will do it afterwards, but there is a, could you bring up the other link? There's a workshop by Wendy Parker, who is around here, I hope. Is she? Yes, she's there if you've got a question. So she was generous enough to give away a free ticket for one of the people who gave the pitch to attend her workshop about uh, do it your own publicity public bootcamp. Can I ask you something right now? Is it possible to run a low cost seminar for Silicon Beach, like $10, one hour, about publicity and PR? Yes, yes okay, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Alexa. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up because I know some people are getting quite impatient and they will start in networking because, yep. Sorry about the long pictures, but this is a special night, so, yep, we have to do that. And I want to uh, introduce Silicon News, uh, uh, which I started about a month ago. Silicon News is now on Medium, so uh, we don't have a slide, we don't need a slide. Just remember medium.com forward slash Silicon News, which is our own publication, and you can all contribute to that. It is a publication on Medium. So what I'm going to offer is to all the pitchers, the people who pitch today, uh, what is called a pitch blog. It is an uh, innovation of Silicon Beach. You can put the pitch video up there and you can write whatever you want that you couldn't include in the 90 second pitch as a blog post under that. And uh, I will contact all the pitchers. Just give us the email or come on to our Slack channel 
Alex, can you put the Slack channel uh, uh, website? We will put it out in an email. I've got all your email addresses. If you book through Eventbrite, we should have your email and also through Meetup, I'll send you the link. Uh, come on to Silicon Beach, those of you who want to volunteer, get involved in running this community, join the Slack channel, and we can together make and uh, make this an alternative to Silicon Valley in the world. But that is my dream to connect all the Silicon Beach together. Yeah. That's the, that's the, I'll send you this link, it's a bit hard to remember, it's uh, uh, slack.siliconbeach.community, I think. And, uh, yeah, join there and you can then talk to all of us, all of you all can network, carry on this networking together online. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. If there's nothing else, we'll wind up. Thank you for coming, you can continue for about... Uh, Oh, I think at 8 30 we have to close the venue. I don't know what the time is now. So you can keep networking and continue online as well. And see you next month. We always meet on the first Thursday night of the month. So I think in June, it's first of June, Thursday. We normally meet at Royal Melbourne Hotel. So you can join up at meetup.com for this Melbourne Silicon Beach. If you search Melbourne Silicon Beach, you can't be come up. And those who are on Eventbrite, we will send you an email out. If you don't like to join meetup.com, I know some people hate meetup.com, I don't know why. If you don't like, we will always have, our, uh, from now on, we will have it on Eventbrite as well, so you can come through Eventbrite. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much for coming, and thanks to the volunteers once again. Just say hello to you. Yep. But it won't happen without you turning up as well. So give a round of applause to yourself as well. Do you have a website for the co-ed?